Hi, my name is Bob Grunier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project and I'm here in Holland with Henk Juren and we are going to talk more about hiding plasma. Right. Here on the table is a process of thinking. We have seen this pieces before and in a way we have seen this piece before as well. There's the another copper pipe. This is one Bob didn't see before. This is cut as well. So this whole process of hiding plasma, here it's hiding, here it was difficult to hide, but you can see it was going into um, holes in the iron, and here it was hiding in the pipe, cutting out this copper. So I thought, this, I wanted to check this um, hiding principle, you could say. So I thought of a simple experiment and I bought uh, some spheres. I, I welded it on a steel bar I put under in the tank. And I did two things. One, I made a sphere with one hole on the top, welded it stuck together. And the other one, I made it two holes, both sides. And that's away from the anode, because the anode's here. One is kind of looking inside. And in this one, in this case, it's not possible to look inside. The holes are on the side. And then when I opened it, this was empty and dirty. And you can see there is something produced, it's green, probably. It must be copper because there was brass powder and KOH and a little um, iron inside. And it's the same mixture I put in here as well. Well, here nothing happened. This is not touched. You can see the inside of the sphere is just plain steel, exactly the same as when it uh, was mounted here. Well, this is totally different, totally black, and nothing you can say was left. It was just an empty shell with black stuff. And the temperature you could see, this was just maybe getting hot and plasma sometimes was there and around it as well. And uh, well, this for me was the proof that the plasma wants to hide, it doesn't want to have this direct contact. Um, then I thought, well now, okay, I know this, so I don't have to use two spheres and make a little bigger one. I make the support strong, because sometimes I saw this cap of the sphere getting real hot. In this one, you could see the ball getting really hot. Um, so I thought, well, make it a strong bar. It can take away the heat, dissipate the heat, weld something from some old iron, and then um, fill it up. And I've made a few of them. And I'm, just on purpose, I made this, that this uh, being flat, and I made little holes inside of the of the sphere, uh, so I could. Um, let the plasma get in contact with the inside. Um, and it worked perfectly. But I got the problem that the plasma wanted to hide as well, but also outside. And then it was going into um, the area between the sphere and the um, um, the ball in the, the bar yeah. and, and, and it was going in. So I was welding it again, trying to close it a little bit. I'm not a perfect welder. So there were cracks in there and of course the plasma wants to go there as well. So everything, everywhere there is a crack, there's a place to hide and it wants to go there. So there was also lots to see outside. But very often you could see flashes coming out and then when you open the, the ball, the sphere, material in there is gone so um, 
I, I, in that case, this is a proof point that I think uh, it, it, the ball lightning is working actively inside and uh, doing its job. And you see it all over the place. And this is a, a, a kind of mechanism that uh, that can be thought of to uh, to induce it in an, in an easy way. It, it, it works very quickly. But then we have to have very nice, clean surfaces so that the plasma doesn't go, doesn't want to go there. And here is another detail. This is black. This is like normal steel. It's a little rusty now. It's been a few weeks ago that I used it. And uh, but when the process is going on, you can see the cap here is very black. This was also black, but for unexplainable reason, the plasma wants to eat it. And it was going on and eat it all, make make the steel clean again. And you can see here also on the side that some pieces, parts are just clean, cleaned out. Here you can see it maybe the best. Here you can see areas that's cleaned out again. So what can we learn from it? Yeah, probably a lot. And I think it's more questions than answers for now. But this is the behavior of the plasma. That's what I can uh, think of. Anyway, Thank you very much. Um, uh, no, um, other than um, obviously with a spherical structure if you hit the um, resonant mode then um, uh, if it is the size of the sphere then it's going to work very well but uh, I was also talking uh, yesterday about how if you have a tube or a hole and you have some iron acoustic waves you will then have sound resonance within this cavity or in the end of the tube and this is like blowing the, over the top of a bottle and as soon as you get sound you're going to get uh, uh, maxima and minima and still points on the nodes as well as maximum movement yeah and that, that I think is a very good um, idea to, to, to investigate further because here the pressure, you can say, of the energy or whatever is going up is, is like into the ball straight. So maybe that's, then it's probably very difficult to get any refer um, resonance because you can see nothing happened. And in this case, it happened. So might it be that when things from the anode pass by, mm -hmm. you get turbulences, that's it. That's what I'm saying. It's like if you blow a bottle from the top, you don't get really any chance. But no. if you blow across it, exactly. you get the resonance going on. So, and the same thing with the bottle is when you put it in different different angles, you mm -hmm. get different tones. So mm -hmm. this is probably the same. And so the the, 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 the likely something similar. Yeah. So we were talking about potentially creating both open-ended tubes like we have in the Nova reactors and closed-ended tubes like we, we have used in the Nova reactors. But in the Nova reactors, we've also had a closed-ended tube, but the, at the end of the tube itself is, is a sphere. And that is to create like a, a tuned cavity that way, but also the tuned cavity in, inside. And um, there are these experiments that are done where you can actually have a pulsing forward and backward within a cavity. I, th I can't remember. I think they used alcohol or something. And uh, you get expansion, compression, expansion, compression, so on. You can actually make an engine out of it <laughs> just using the evaporation and, and condensation of um, alcohol, I think, within a resonant cavity. I can't remember the experiment, but it's a well-known experiment. And um, so if, if an event occurs in here which causes... It, an expansion of whatever's inside that will come out and then uh, th that'll co collapse what, whatever the system was in there and then it'll suck it back in so you get that resonance not only across the top but it sets up a resonant mode and so we talked about having uh, before we were talking about having a crack that's a of a certain size and 
uh, that it seems to be more active right at the bottom and out a little way, that if we had tubes, like you've done here, but these are very short tubes, they're, they're, the dimension that way is very large relative to the depth. If you had uh, brass tubes that are either open-ended at both ends or closed-end at one end, um, it acts like a, almost like an organ pipe, and the, or like a, a pan flute, like like a South American uh, uh, pan flute, and um, you can have both uh, diff tubes of different length, and also tubes of different diameter, like you would have on a church organ, and you arrange these in an, an array, <laughs> and then see which ones react to different voltages, to uh, uh, different pressures, and so on. And by knowing which tube of which length and which diameter you have in your array, which pressure of gas and uh, which voltage potential, you may be able to find a relationship uh, that gives you some guide towards um, setting up the resonant uh, or the system that's conducive to a particular resonant starting yep. so that that's kind of what uh, extending out what we were discussing yesterday because this is clearly a about sound vibration in addition to the elements involved and the pressure and electrical parameters and other parameters uh, like chemical parameters involved yeah, and there is an, a subject you did not discuss. You have the material that's the what I've called the heat pipe, and uh, we'll talk about that in another video. Yeah, great, and that will sus sus support from, uh, part of this thought. Yeah.